Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. Now, I know that I have been gone for a while. Some of you may have noticed and I kind of wanted to make my first video back. Not necessarily an explanation, but I did want to talk about it because I do think it's relevant and I'm always a little bit jarred when people just disappear then come back and act like nothing happened. I'm going to be talking about being offline for about two months. I didn't count the days, so it might be slightly less than two months. And there were times where I was online in the sense of I'd post a picture and leave, or maybe I'd just be on Tumblr, which for me doesn't count as social media because I don't interact with anyone there. I just like look at nice pictures of fashion and stuff. So. I was online sometimes in that respect. But other than that, I wasn't really on Twitter. I wasn't checking Instagram. I wasn't checking any of that. And so I wanted to talk about the effects that had on me. And now I know that there are some very stereotypical things that you probably expect to hear like, oh, my mental health got better, blah, 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 which I mean, is true for a lot of people. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you a pro and a con of being offline but I also wanted to tell you kind of some inside shit that I haven't been talking about, mainly because initially I was a little bit scared, to be honest, and I wasn't really sure how to operate under the circumstances. Before I decided to go basically on a hiatus was that I got a death threat, and, um, I think that being online, that's something you need to expect, sadly. I expect that fully, but the thing is, in my mind at least, and you guys can let me know if you disagree with this, but in my mind there is also a difference between a credible death threat and a death threat, quote unquote death threat, like kill yourself or stuff like that. When I see kill yourself, blah, 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 you know, I don't really take that to heart. It becomes different when someone starts listing addresses, when someone like starts threatening your family, your extended family, people you know, they know their full names. When it turns into that, it becomes a lot more, well, real feeling as opposed to the kill yourself comments and it becomes a lot more disturbing. And what that triggered for me anyway was a feeling of extreme anxiety, panic, and discomfort in my own home. I just was not able to function as I usually did because it always felt like I was looking over my shoulder in some way. And more than my safety, because here there's me, there's Jacob, we have a security system. We're also armed specifically for this reason because people are fucking crazy. I wasn't so much worried for us as much as extended family and my direct family as well, like my blood family. They're not you know, necessarily prepared for this. I am, I know what swatting is. They don't even know what swatting is. So it turned into a bit of an ordeal, you know, of dealing with the police and, you know, calling the police because I didn't want to get swatted, you know, in case said people, person, whatever, decided to, you know, make up some story to make them come here and then knock down my door and cause God knows what. So that happened. And once that happened, I think I had a little bit of a moment, shall we say, where I just kind of wanted to be away. Now, I'm not saying that's the only reason why, I'm just saying that is part, a big part, of what happened that caused a lot of just mental shit in my life. So I decided to stay offline for basically two months just to gather myself, to get my shit together, and to not basically come on here shaking and being weird because that's kind of how I was. I was very shaky and just uncomfortable and not myself. Luckily, I was able to finally go back home to Italy after three years, so I got to see family I hadn't seen in three years. But I did want to talk about the pros and cons of being offline because I've seen a lot of my friends talking about, you know, I want to delete my Instagram, I want to delete my Twitter, so on and so forth. And I mean, obviously, it's up to you what you think is healthy for you. So I'm not gonna tell you to do A or B, I'm just gonna tell you my experience. So I'm gonna read one pro, one con, one pro, one con, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna get the 
expected one out of the way for mental health uh you know being away from social media i think is good for most people's mental health i do think it forces you to think about your triggers and the thing is i think what i realized for myself is that i have very obvious triggers like anything related to eating disorders, super thin Instagram models, stuff like that, like very typical triggers like that relate also to body dysmorphia. Those are all very much there and I'm very much aware of them. But there is also some content that I was consuming that while I consume it, I don't feel bad, but in the long run, do I feel good about it? You know what I mean? So it's also a question of saying not it's not just about, do I feel bad looking at this this very moment? But it's more like, okay, I'm watching this 15 minute video about topic X. Later in the day, is my mood affected by what I watched? Am I conditioned in some way by what I watched? Does that make sense? So I think it made me very aware of the content I was consuming. So there was content that I think was damaging to me that I wasn't aware was damaging to me until I stepped away. And when I wasn't watching it, not only did I not miss it, but then I started thinking, oh, maybe that content is also why I react to certain things in certain ways. And I'm not blaming the content as much as that's just my reaction to it. And I need to be aware that that's my reaction to it and I have to take the necessary steps to either avoid it, watch it less, you know, whatever the case may be, but I definitely am more aware of what I can consume and what is just not good for me at all. So on the other hand, there also is a con, in my opinion, in terms of mental health, in terms of not being on social media at all, and this is very personal to me, but the majority of my closest friends live on other continents and obviously then in different time zones. So it's already difficult to communicate generally, let alone if you're staying off your phone or if you're isolating yourself as I do when I go into periods of like bad depression, bad anxiety, bad panic. It's 10 times harder to stay in contact with those people because you're trying to stay off your phone and then the time difference, so if you write them, you're probably never gonna really be talking in real time and it's very complicated. So when that occurs, that can cause a really big feeling of isolation because not only are you not checking social media, so you have no idea what's going on on Instagram, you have no idea what's going on on Twitter, you have no idea or you have a little of an idea of what's going on with your friends, but other than that, it's basically you in the moment. Now, obviously there can be an argument made being like, well, see friends in real life, which again, the majority of my close friends live in different continents. So it's not like I can go and get coffee with someone. And thank God I live with Jacob. So I have my best friend right here. But at the same time, it also can feel very excluding and isolating to kind of remove yourself from the grid, basically. And like I said, it can have those very, very positive impacts, but at the same time, you can also find yourself feeling, you know, kind of that feeling when you miss a day of school and then you come back and then there's like an assignment you didn't know about and you're like, wait, what? And you have this not feeling necessarily of pure anxiety, but you have this feeling of, I have no idea what's going on and that can give you anxiety, that kind of feeling. But at the same time, you might not have the energy to be social or to interact to your full ability. So you don't kind of want to be the bummer who's half talking to someone. I know that when I isolate myself, I prefer to isolate myself until I can come back full force. I can have a full conversation, I can give you my full attention, and it's not just like me saying a couple words to you and not really responding. I don't like doing that. I'd rather be there entirely or not at all. I mean, I don't know how healthy that is, but that's how I'm wired. So a pro though is that being off social media is a good thing because it serves as the larger reminder that what goes on online most of the time isn't real or isn't as deep as it seems, which is pretty much an obvious statement, I think. But I do think if you spend enough time online, you will get sucked into it no matter what. So even if you're fully aware that some drama is some total BS, if you spend enough time around the drama or the news, the politics, whatever it is, if you spend too much time around a given subject, 
it will start taking over all of your thoughts and all of the ways you perceive the world and it turns into this big thing which I mean, politics are important. There are plenty of things that are important that are discussed online, sure. But at the same time, there has to be a level of moderation where you realize this is important, but I also can't let it turn me into basically, you can't let it turn into your personality trait. And I feel like there are times when, and I'm sure this has happened to a lot of people, I know it's happened to my friends, where you're following some kind of story, some narrative, whatever it is, whether it's drama, politics, whatever, and you're so kind of invested in it. And then you tell someone who's not really online or who's not invested in it, you tell them about it and they just kind of look at you like, okay, so. And they remind you that there's a lot of other stuff going on and that this stuff most of the time, at least on Twitter or on Instagram, unless you just follow politics and serious things, a lot of it is just like stupid shit that doesn't really matter and that won't have an effect on your life. Like whatever some YouTuber is doing, it won't change your day-to-day -day life. So I think that's a pro of stepping back that when you come back online, you're like, while I was offline, I didn't even think of this. While I was offline, this didn't affect me at all. While I was offline, you know what I mean? So I think that is definitely a very positive aspect of staying offline for a while. Even just a week, I think, would make a difference, to be honest. So another con is that sometimes there are aspects that you can't separate from toxicity. And by that, I mean, for example, the reason I liked Instagram in the first place is because the majority of the people I follow on Instagram, if they're not my friends, they're fashion bloggers, like people who just like put together cool outfits or who show you where they got cool outfits, stuff like that, like very lighthearted content. And that's really the majority of what I follow on Instagram. Now, the thing is, sometimes you can't separate that from what triggers you in the sense of there are a lot of fashion bloggers, whatever you want to call them, fashion influencers that also fit the category that triggers me as in they trigger my eating disorders or they'll talk about how much food they eat and it's very little or it's unhealthy and it's just like not good advice generally but i do like the outfits and so you're just kind of like can i check this can i not check this and you're in this weird kind of limbo of i enjoy this but i know that this might hurt me so should i just not look at it at all even though i enjoy it and you're stuck like i said in the purgatory zone. I think that's a con just because it's a difficult decision and I think it's a decision that also isn't necessarily immediately noticed. I've only noticed this recently that sometimes the toxic for me and what I enjoy are intertwined and so I just need to knock out the whole thing even though I enjoy half of it, if that makes sense. So another pro of being off social media is that it can help avoid burnout like I mentioned. And then, you know, like when you come back, I think you have a clear mind, which I think is something that's pretty much been made a point throughout my other points. So I'm not going to elaborate on that. And the last thing that's a con is when you come back to social media, if you decide to, you're going to be overwhelmed. And I think that is basically inevitable unless you have someone telling you what's going on with who and what, whatever, unless you have someone kind of giving you summaries which I didn't really because Jacob isn't really on social media. And with my best friend, we talked about other stuff, so it wasn't really a discussion. When you come back, you probably are going to feel extremely overwhelmed, which is basically what happened to me. Like I remember, <laughs> I think I came back a couple days ago, really only. I think I checked Twitter for the first time, like checked, checked Twitter for the first time in a month-ish, like I hadn't scrolled it or anything prior. And there's so many things that I used to keep tabs on that now I'm just completely lost on, which isn't the end of the world, mind you, but it can be very overwhelming because you'll see all these updates that won't make any sense to you and you'll be wondering, okay, wait, what? when did this happen? What happened? In what order? To who? When? Why? What were the consequences? And so I think that that can also be a con because as much as you want to cleanse yourself, it's kind of a the irony of cleansing yourself and coming back with a clear mind but as soon as you come back it's like hey here are three billion pieces of news that you just don't have any idea about and you're gonna have to figure it out or get someone to explain it to you and uh, 
that's something I think you just need to prepare yourself for. Not like it's the end of the world or anything like that, but if you have anxiety or things like that, or if you get easily overwhelmed around social media, that can be an issue. It really doesn't take all that much to catch up. You know, you just look at the feeds of the people who kind of summarize a lot of things. Thankfully, I follow a lot of people who summarize a lot of things. So I just looked at their feeds and was like, okay, I get the general gist of what's happened since I was gone but it's something to keep in mind. Anyway, I just kind of wanted to make this video to address that. I'll be posting Monday, Wednesday, Friday again, and I'm gonna try and kind of get back into the rhythm of things. Please let me know what you think. If there are topics you want me to cover, please let me know, because like I said, I'm out of the loop. I'm trying to catch up on things, but I'm probably still out of the loop realistically. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and I'll catch you guys next time.